Hey everyone, my name's Sebastian and welcome to Atmos Seeker, your place for creating an inspiring atmosphere for your tabletop role-playing games. On the channel, I've used a variety of lighting types for all kinds of different lighting effects, and in today's episode, I wanted to focus on one of my favorites called DMX Lighting. This is a great place to start if you're thinking of setting up that kind of lighting, and I've split up the video into sections if you want to jump around to what interests you the most. DMX Lighting is typically used for stage or DJ style setups, but these are fantastic for creating dynamic lighting that is extremely responsive and easy to control once it's all set up. If you're getting ready for an epic finale of a three year campaign or just want to increase the immersion at your game table, in this video I'll show the equipment and techniques I've used to achieve some of these effects. Whilst this type of lighting typically works best in a dedicated game room space, I'll also show some options I've used for a portable style setup as well. So a bunch of the setup can be done with an average PC or laptop running Windows 10, with some extra parts to connect and control the lighting. I have links to all the equipment listed in the description below. There are a large variety of DMX lighting fixtures that will work in this setup that vary in price. And here I'm using some Parkan lights that have RGB and white LEDs that create some great wash effects. These ones have a digital address indicator on the back, which make it much easier than lights with dip switches. Assigning addresses is important because this is how we'll be able to control the individual lights. Now these quad flat cans from Aave had quite a loud fan noise, so I ended up disconnecting the fan from inside mine. Obviously the fan is to prevent overheating, but after running the lights for several hours at a time, the lights are barely warm to the touch. In the future, I'll definitely test these lights in store to avoid this problem. For connecting the lights to the computer, I'm currently using a USB to DMX adapter. I used to use a console, but these can get quite bulky or expensive, and this is a cheap generic brand of Amazon. It works great, but I'll share some solutions to some of the problems I had while setting it up. To connect all the lights together, it's going to take a few DMX cables of various lengths to chain all the lights together. It doesn't matter what order they're connected in, just that the addresses on the lights are different. So now that we've got all that we need and everything's plugged in, let's set the address on the first light to 1 on the digital readout. Before we get to installing the drivers for the adapter, let's install the software we'll be using to control the lights called QLC+. It's free to download, extremely versatile and makes it really easy to set up fancy lighting animations. Once that's installed, we'll go about adding our lighting fixture. On the fixtures tab, hit the big green plus button to add our PAR light. You'll see a large list of different lighting brands. If you can see your brand and model of light, then you can skip this next step. But if you're using a generic brand fixture, go to the generic pull down menu. If these lights I'm using were a generic brand, I know they have RGBW LEDs in them, so I'll choose the generic RGBW fixture. You can see by selecting one of these options, it populates some information on the right. The most important parts being the address and channels. The channels are basically each individual colour that can be mixed to create a variety of hues and intensities. If we were connecting an additional fixture after this one, the amount of channels a light has affects the address of the following light. For instance, the light at address 1 has 4 channels, then our second light would have to start at address 5. If you do have lights that use dip switches instead of a digital readout, QLC has a great address tool that helps you work out what switches need to be flipped to get the correct address. Once the fixtures are all added, we have to get our computer talking to our lighting fixtures by installing drivers for the UDMX adapter. I've put a link in the description to the one that I've installed. I've installed the first one from this list, but it may vary for you depending on your PC setup. To enable the adapter in QLC+, make sure UDMX is selected on the Inputs Outputs tab. One problem I ran into with this adapter that's specific to Windows 10 was that there was some stepping when moving the sliders. After trawling dozens of web forums, I finally found a solution to the problem. To get the light animating smoothly, I needed to edit some values in the registry editor, then navigating to disk directory, where we'll see a bunch of keys for QLC+. Under the UDMX key, a new frequency D word needs to be added. I have the decimal value for mine set to 30. 
After those changes, the adapter and lights are now working smoothly. Now that all our lights and sliders are working properly, we can start to create preset lighting combinations and animations for the variety of locations and moods that we want to create. When running the game, having these presets makes it fast to transition between different scenes rather than fiddling around with different sliders during play. For my setup, I use chases and scenes that are fired off from the virtual console. Scenes in QLC are static lighting values whereas chasers use scenes to create animated lighting sequences. To create a scene, on the Functions tab, we want to click the New Scene button, and then after giving our scene a name, add the fixtures that you want to control in this scene. Now there are some additional tabs where we can set the individual values for these lights. One additional thing that I like to add on static scenes is adding a fade for a few seconds to make for some smooth lighting transitions. Now if we want to make something a bit more animated like a thunderstorm, we'll make a quick chase sequence. On the functions tab, click the new chase button. I've pre-made four scenes that all have different lighting values. and we can tell QLC how we want those scenes to transition from one to another, the speed they'll transition, and the order they'll play. Now that we have some scenes and chases set up, we can set up our virtual console to fire off these presets easily. On the virtual console tab, create a new button for each function you'd like to be able to activate. To be able to use this virtual console, we just need to switch to the operate mode and we're good to go. A big part of my setup is I also use the Elgato Stream Deck to control these lighting scenes. If you'd like to see how I set that up, subscribe to not miss out on that future video. Now whilst I usually have these mounted on the ceiling, there are a variety of stands that can be used for a more portable solution. Basic lighting stands like these with a the thread on the top can work well for larger lights. Whereas smaller fixtures like these can be mounted on these table pole clamps. Another option if you just want to splash light on the walls and ceiling is to use them as up lighting by placing them on the floor. Well I hope you found that helpful for creating your own cinematic stage lighting for tabletop gaming. If you did, hit that like button or comment below. This video was voted for by my amazing supporters on Patreon, so if you'd like to see what else I'm experimenting on with behind the scenes, consider joining today. A special shout out to our amazing Seeker patrons Luke Mansberger, Chris Andrus, Charisma on Command, and Marcus Mosserman. Thank you for your amazing support. And until next time, I'm Sebastian, and let's create and inspire. Catch you then.